and we're live everybody welcome in it is monday 2 p.m central thank you so much for joining me i hope you had a fantastic weekend i usually have my airpods but i was listening to podcasts all weekend because i was uh preparing the baby room and i forgot to plug them in so i have to use my computer headphones i have richard from not legal advice back on the channel on this monday you can find him at not legal advice richard's a lawyer uh you can also find him on x at ra raw 999 you can see it right on his uh, profile and richard's going to help us understand what is going on with this uh pay package thing that was rescinded at Tesla with Elon Musk comp pay package and the six billion dollar fees that the lawyers are asking in return for them winning that case in Delaware. So I'll throw it over to Richard. Give us a lay of the land. We're going to sure. pepper you with questions and then we'll take it from there. Yeah. And I forgot to mention. So, you know, to, to you. So not that I'm an expert in this and not that this is legal advice, but ironically, I have filed attorney's fee motions, so motions seeking attorney's fees. I have opposed attorney's fees motions. And also, I don't know why, but I testified as an expert witness on the issue of attorney's fees in federal court in uh, St. Louis. So I'm very honored to have you. This is basically you, what you're saying. I should be honored is what you're you, saying. You should be honored, of course. <laughs> and you're by the honored, way, yes. Did, yeah. Did you be, did, by the way, just, just before I go ahead and yeah. give you a quick summary, did you yeah. hear about the um, con woman nymphomaniac? No. She screwed everyone. Okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, all right. Four out All of right. ten. Okay, so we're on a derivative action. The derivative action was the lawsuit filed by Toretta, I guess, as the lead plaintiff, who only had nine shares. So his, but just as a side issue, somebody like that will get like a ten or fifteen thousand dollar bonus. That's kind of the that's kind of the issue. But anyway, the attorneys on uh, Friday, which would have been March first, filed a motion for attorneys' fees, and that was kind of per the agreement of uh, the judge and et cetera. Uh, in the emotion, what they do is they seek a uh, sum. They didn't seek money. They sought stock. They they didn't seek money. And the, the thought process is the reason why they didn't seek money was because if Tesla was obligated to pay $6 billion out of their bank account, it could have a dr drastic effect on them. And they may have thought that that would less likely to have been approved by the court. So they asked for stock. They did this contrived calculation of the number of shares based upon the options. They did a calculation on the number of shares that were saved, basically, that go back to Tesla that they could use for whatever their purpose. And I think they calculated that. I'm, I'm rounding just for our purposes. Let's say it's 266 million shares. And they calculated that by the current price or whatever the price was when they did the calculation. I think it was like 190 something. And that gave a $55 billion figure. So they used that as the base figure and the economic benefit that they generated for Tesla uh, because all these shares were returned. And in Delaware, the, the way the law is structured, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to I'm going to show you a difference. First, I'm going to do California, then I'll do Delaware. So in California, and I think I mentioned this on our last one, we were talking about the other matter. In California, we use a lodestar method. So, And they reference it in, the, in their papers. And just to kind of keep everybody clear, Tesla has not yet filed an opposition. They will. So they'll, they'll have a position that's going to be contrary to this. But in their moving papers, they do lay out the lodestar method. And the lodestar method is total number of hours times a rate, whatever that is. And they spent, they say in this all this action, just under 20,000 hours. And their rate is, appears about 650 bucks an hour. And if you multiply that out, it comes out to be about $13 million. So that under the lodestar method, they would get $13 million under now they're asking for six billion dollars so that's quite a difference quite a, a gap so what they did is in delaware the law um is that if there's a class action and they produce a, a ascertainable economic benefit that the range of recovery is anywhere from 10% to up 
upwards of 33%. And in their paperwork, they did a bunch of magic tricks. Uh, they had a couple of experts. I didn't read the declarations of the experts, but I will. Um, that for various reasons, they discounted this and discounted that. And they tried to show how fair they were in making their calculation because they're basically saying we could have taken 33% of that um, 266 million shares that were saved, but we're only going to take 11%. That's in essence what they're asking for. So 11% is just a tick under $6 billion. And they say that under the test that Delaware has, that's an appropriate amount. In fact, it's probably in a low amount. And the test comes from some case called Sugarland in Texas, and it has five basic factors that they look at. Um, and in this order, the results, and so they argued for many pages, they got a great result because they got full rescission of the option package. The option package is worth $55 billion, although it's not because it's not been exercised and it may not be exercised. So it it could be worth zero. But for their purposes, they they say 55 point, I think it's nine or four, I forget, whatever. The fact, the second factor is if you take it on a contingency as opposed to an hourly, that would provide you a bigger recovery. And they had it on a contingency um, uh, as opposed to a, uh, a straight hourly. Um, the complexities of the case, and they argued this was complex because it was a option and they took 17 depositions. By the way, I didn't think necessarily that they, they laid out what they did in a general form. They did 17 depositions. They sent out five requests for production of documents, yada, yada, yada. Okay, whatever. Uh, I wasn't impressed. That didn't, after seeing that number, it didn't make me conclude that 20,000 hours was a reasonable sum, but I'm not going to, not going to argue about that. The, the credibility of the council and their expertise in the um, in the in it with other attorneys is a factor also to be evaluated. And it happens to be, and I've learned this since, that this particular class action uh, ambulance chasing firm is uh, well respected. So they played that up also. So they looked at all those five figures. They said under Delaware law, we can get 33%, but we're only going to take 11. And as opposed to taking in money, we're going to take it in stock. And so we're going to basically, we're going to live by our words. If we, you know, we, we, we kind of made our bed, so we're going to sleep, sleep in it. That's kind of the position. And again, I think they didn't take the cash because the judge probably would have been less likely to have approved that directly. But I've never, and I spoke to somebody else, the fact requesting actual stock uh, as an award is, I think, very unusual. Um, and the amount, obviously, would be historic because the largest attorney fee award prior to this was in the approximate amount of $668 million in the Enron, Enron litigation, which was a $7.2 billion award. Hmm. The, lar the largest award in Delaware prior to today is $266 million dollars on a one billion dollar uh settlement but that one derived actual money so Gosh. money was paid so here the question is and that test that i described they gave you five different factors whatever it really depends if you can prove up a loss of that economic benefit is there really an economic benefit that was provided by these attorneys and one thing we discussed off uh off when, before we started is what happens if tomorrow Tesla board puts out an emergency notice saying we're going to have a meeting in 30 days to vote on a new pay package for Elon covering this time period. We're going to provide you a copy of the judgment, the complaint, whatever you want to see. We'll have somebody give a complete presentation against Elon's pay package so nobody can argue that people didn't know. And then we'll have a vote. And then They'll vote in the pay package and they will have basically the, the reason why that shareholder vote is important is in Delaware, the way the law is structured is the burden is on Elon. And I kind of we talked about this at one yeah. point in time. So 
he, that's tough for him to win and he probably couldn't win it but the shareholders can override that that issue so if they're full disclosure and there's a majority vote and they override and, they, and you know and the original vote was substantially more than the majority of them um, mm -hmm. they can override that that whatever the judge's determination is so that's why it's important and I think okay. you could do it. And then the question would be if the award was the same or it could be greater, you know, it could even be greater, right? You could get more. Yeah. Uh, what's the benefit? What's the economic benefit? Okay. So, so a few things come to mind. So thank you. Thank you for laying out the groundwork there. I appreciate it. So the, the first thing that comes to mind is, okay, so if the, and you just touched on this, but I really want to reiterate it. Because the pay package was rescinded, which is which is different from voided, right? Because I saw a lot of headlines that ran the story as Elon's comp package is voided. The the comp package is not voided, it's rescinded, which means that the original terms are not valid, but it's subject to be redone. It yeah. has to be redone. In, yeah, in as a matter case. of fact, you know, it, it, what's interesting is I looked at the first, so there was two complaints. There's an original complaint and a first amendment complaint. The prayer is the end of the complaint that lists what you're asking for. This is what I want, the yeah. remedy. One of the remedies they asked for was a revote with full disclosure. So, I mean, if you do it, if that's the remedy, that's clearly not a financial remedy. That just means right. just do a vote. Do a vote. What's the... And they also asked for damages in the prayer, but they didn't seek damages. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, so go ahead. It's, it's so that's that's very confusing right it, it seems like it seems like the most fundamental piece of the lawsuit for like there is which is like hey we want this resolved because when i think lawsuit is like you want an outcome right so then the outcome they're seeking is not even part of the what they're seeking for from a fees perspective because they're saying there is a fundamental benefit from a financial perspective so elon not getting his 55 billion dollars of shares is an economic benefit to the shareholder and thus because of that we deserve 11 percent of those shares yeah, for the I mean, work we did to give that back but but that 55 billion number one hasn't gone back yet and number two for it to go back there would have to be a revote for those shares to go back right, right. and then yeah. the question is is 55 billion even the right number right because it's that's really speculative as to what that number is that's there's there's no way you it can say happened. that's accurate <laughs> yeah. even the even the the option number you know they go back to the option number i think it's 2.5 billion approximately yeah you know if you don't exercise the options the options are worth zero you know eventually so i i find that all speculative and the piece they left out and this kind of was what i we, i learned yesterday i from other counsel so you know yesterday i participated with uh Alexandra had a spaces, so I was one of the attorneys on there. And one of the attorneys brought up a really interesting point. Elon still has to get paid. So let, let's say you disallow the $2.5 billion in options. Well, over that five-year period, you would pay him. So what's right. a reasonable pay? Now, he's the highest paid CEO by far. I took a look, by the way. I decided, why not look, take a look at it and see what the top 10 CEOs are getting paid in 2024? He was by far the top guy. Okay, mm. so I threw him out. Then I went to next one is Tim Cook, seven hundred and seventy million dollars. All right, some people might think Tim Cook's a miracle man. So then I went. What I did is I found somebody on that top ten list that I said I never even heard of this guy, and this company is okay, but whatever. Salesforce. Okay, you've heard <laughs> of that company, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the okay. It doesn't like move me. I don't think it's like, you know, fundamental. They're not going to Mars. And right. the guy, the CEO is getting paid $450 million a year. Okay. So if I take $450 million times five years, that five-year period, we're at about two, 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 three billion. So we're yeah. not left with a big benefit if there is a benefit. So that yeah. was kind of, and that was omitted. There's nowhere in their brief do they touch upon that he would get something. That's or so that, strange. Or that they would be entitled to a revote. So I, that will play in or should play in somewhere. Yeah. Okay. So so that's that's the first one. So it's like they're asking for a number that is not even. We don't even know what the number is because they didn't actually save investors any money because the thing is going back to a vote anyway. Uh, it's going to be revoted on at some point because it's rescinded, not voided, not voided. And if if on the 
which is I think is the most likely outcome, the the same exact plan gets uh, put in forward in front of investors again with just additional paperwork to cover some of the transparency issues that were called out on the lawsuit. If it's well, voted yes again, again, that's like nothing has changed. But I would bet their argument will be we saved you $55 billion. If you want to go ahead and spend it, that's your choice. That's a separate deal. But how is that, how's the how's that even the thing? Well, no, because they're there. I, I I guarantee you this is gonna be an argument. You know, one transaction, we went in and got a lawsuit. We basically freed up for Tesla 266 million shares. If they want to go acquire a company and use stock to acquire a company, they could do that. If they wanted to pay Farzad a bonus because he has such a great channel, they could do that. They don't have to use it on on elon they don't have to use it at all they could just keep it but okay yeah. but the argument there is the same exact shares that you by the way you, again i'm just no, arguing i'm arguing of to course this side. Yeah. you're a lawyer obviously so yeah. as a as a sub amateur lawyer as somebody who doesn't even know how the law works in a lot of the times so if then my, my pushback would be okay but those same exact shares that you're asking that, that you're saying you can spend it anywhere you want. I saved you those $55 billion in shares. Those are the shares that we were paying the CEO with that we are going to pay him anyway. So why are you entitled to a fee on a thing that hasn't changed? Well, I don't think you are, but they will say they are. And the fact that they haven't been exercised, they, will, they would say is they're going to be. I mean, you can anticipate... Elon's not going to just let the the shares go by and not take them. Yeah, but uh, they, but investors already voted yes to give it to him, right? I agree. What is? But that's not part of the equation, though, because it's based on a 2018 ruling, right? That this is the unfortunate part of it, which makes it even more nonsensical, because because now they're basically they're extracting or they're trying to extract six billion dollars of Tesla stock from the float, right? They're yeah. trying to dilute the flow by 1% on something that hasn't happened and was going to happen anyway due to a revote on the thing. So they're basically just asking for what, I mean, this is my interpretation of the thing, right? They're basically asking the company to create 1% of additional flow to pay them in Tesla stock because they won this case, which really hasn't changed anything. Not only that, you're diluted. I, you, I'm diluted. Share, yeah, every shareholder, shareholder yeah. which was meant to be protected from this thing, is now diluted by the law firm. And you didn't have a chance to participate at all. I didn't get a right. notice. I didn't get anything. I didn't get. I didn't yeah. go to court. Nothing. So, brilliant. That seems, <laughs> yeah, that seems to be you know somewhat kind of odd. The other thing, and we I mentioned this. You know, there's probably, and I don't know this for certain, but I would guess, and there should be if there's not. There's probably insurance. So if they would have asked for a monetary sum from the officers and directors and Elon, the people that were actually sued. So in this case, just so we have clear, the company is not sued. It's the company who is suing. So Toretta is suing on behalf of the company. He's suing the officers and directors in Elon, but they're collecting against Tesla. That's the, the, the maneuver. He's and suing as the company in behalf of a person that has nine shares. Yes. Correct? Yeah. Yes. But that's technically, you know, okay. Yeah, yeah. Technically okay. But the point is the lawsuit was directed at individuals that may have insurance. So if there was a monetary award, insurance would pay out at least some of the money, if not all. The way they've structured it, they're not seeking money against those individuals. They're seeking the stock against the company. So wild. which dilutes the shareholders who haven't had any chance to participate and just kind of like just to, uh, just to reference it um alexander we explored what could do and I, i'm going to briefly go over what things can do so we talked about it um because somebody had uh somebody had suggested they were pissed so they suggested they wanted to sue the law firm a for, counter suit yeah right? yeah okay. You can't really sue the law firm if the judge agreed with them because the judge says you're right. If the judge says you're right, then how could you go after the law firm? But I understand the disdain for the law firm. I understand that. So the secondary thing is you could file a brief. So we're not parties to the case, and but you could draft a brief. 
or a group of investors could draft a brief. They could send it to the presiding judge. They could, it's, it would be called an amicus brief, a friend of the court brief. They could ask the presiding judge to grant their motion that it be considered by the trial court in making their ruling, and so be it. And either the, the judge would say yes, and they would consider it, or no, they wouldn't consider it. And if they didn't consider it, that's possibly another issue you could raise on appeal, that they should have considered it and might have affected their decision. If they do consider it, it might impact their decision. Okay, so that was another thing you could do. Three, under, and I'm not a Delaware lawyer, and you know, it would, this certainly would have been better if it was brought earlier, but things have changed because of the request, in the attorney's fee request. But under Delaware what law, if you're impacted or your property is directly impacted by a court decision, then you have a right to intervene in the case. So theoretically, as an investor, based upon that, the request for attorney's fees that would relate to stock, investors would seem to have their interest impacted. Theoretically, could they make a motion? And by the way, you know, anybody out there, any law firm out there that wants to go for it, go for it. But if they want to make a motion to um, intervene and present the position of investors, you know, maybe denied because it may be too late. That's why I said, you know, in the proceedings, but on the flip side, the attorney's fee issue just kind of became different than it was ever before. So maybe they would let you intervene. And last but not least, and this was the, so anybody could do any of those. Before I would do any of those, of course, especially if it was a legal filing, I would check with Tesla's counsel to make sure that you weren't doing anything that was undermining something they were doing. And last but not least, and this was kind of the idea that we uh, agreed upon that thought was the, the, the best for the buck, is individual investors could, could basically write to the judge, uh, simply state who they are, what their concerns are in a very respectful way, and send it to the judge. Now, the judge is not going to be sitting there reading, you know, 100,000 letters, but you can imagine if 100,000 letters go to the courthouse and they bring in these boxes of letters and maybe Tesla's counsel decides to attach some of those to its opposition or reply to these documents. But, they, but the thought was that might be influential. And beyond that, it's a way of, you know, Tesla investors having a way of kind of doing some kind of action that will make them feel like they have a, you know, a, a voice in the process. So I, I think that's the method they chose as the primary method. The idea was uh, the, this, this particular motion was filed March 1. We it's not, it's hard to find these documents because the case is sealed. So every filing, when I looked, I've, I've looked through a service, not the court service, because the if you look at the court, uh, the regular access, it sends you somewhere else on this particular file. But through some another document I saw that there's a document that's filed privately, and then there's a redacted document that's filed publicly. So probably everything is filed is done that way. So it may be like there's a couple day delay for everything, but there will be a briefing schedule. So Tesla will be allowed to oppose this. And there's probably an, a date already, but we don't know it. So they'll probably yeah. be given like 30 days to oppose it. And then Toretta's counsel will probably have 15 or 30 days to file a reply. And then there'll probably be a hearing on, on this issue. Got it. Okay. So that, that's very, so that there are options if people are not happy with this, with the ruling, not only the ruling, but the fact that the, the law, the, the law office that won the case uh, is seeking for you know six billion dollars. They could do those things that you just yes. outlined. There's multiple it, options. Yeah, and if you need yeah. the uh, contact information, I think on Alexandra's uh, uh, Twitter on feed. X. Yeah, on X, yeah. it's there. If one of the mods could share that, that would be great. If we have them in the comments section. Uh, okay, so then um, is is it weird? And this is just like a, a, I saw this question proposed on X and. So, something I was thinking about in, in the week uh, over the weekend after the news broke on Friday. Do you think it delegitimizes the the court decision when it's based on a CEO being paid way too much money that the same law firm is seeking an unprecedented amount of fees on an amount that hasn't yet been awarded to the person that's being implicated here? Yeah, do, that do you think? 
isn't that a weird thing? That was one of my points. I I actually right. discussed, I discussed that yesterday. I thought, isn't that suggestive? If they're willing to run with Elon as opposed to taking money, aren't they kind of contrary Doing the same to thing? their position? <laughs> aren't they going like against their position? They're saying he's not worth it, but they're willing to ride with him in the future. I I thought it was inconsistent with their position. So I agree. Okay. So and then, do you think the judge? Uh, will take that into how is there a uh, mechanism for the judge to take that into consideration is that even something that she's going to look at help me understand how that dynamic could play out in the courtroom theoretically there'll be briefs filed and and so they had expert declarations attached to this brief uh again i haven't reviewed them they're referred to in the the brief they filed that so they referred to the declarations and it didn't seem like anything that was like super going to be super um, changing of the brief. But what will happen is uh, Tesla will, uh, or Tesla, the uh, directors, I don't know how many briefs will be filed because theoretically each one could file a brief. Um, they'll file a brief and they'll have declarations attached to that also. And, the, and then there'll be another brief filed. So eventually the court will have all that. They will review the declarations. She can consider whatever she wants in there. Uh, you know, a detailed ruling should go, though, through the declaration. If I cite Farzad's declaration and um, and she's going and she's analyzing how I used Farzad's declaration, in her ruling, she should say, Farzad said the color was blue, but I didn't think he had a good view of the, of the streetlight. So I don't know. If, I, I'm not going to take his uh, testimony uh, as credible. Yeah, she should evaluate that and the evidence and then come to the conclusion. But how she does that, you know, listen, she's already shown that she's not a big fan, right? So the only thing that that kind of might keep her in check a little bit is that award of that Dell award of 26.67%. That's on appeal in the Delaware Supreme Court on attorney's fees. So, yeah. so it's an issue. And I think, again, you know, if it were me, and if it's doable, and I don't know if it's doable, but if it were me and doable, if I were Tesla, I'd be getting this done before the hearing on the motion for attorney's fees. Yeah. And then when the motion for attorney's fees comes, I'd be saying, you know, what's the what's the benefit? What's the big deal? I, yeah. yeah, what's the deal? We're back in the same same place and we had full disclosure and everybody heard everything as they, these guys, requested. How realistic is that to happen where Tesla decides to run a revote on the rescinded pay package to to get it reapproved essentially with, with the with the assumption that it will get reapproved, right? Because I think over here we're saying, you know, they should run the vote. We're assuming that the investors are gonna vote yes. I don't know why they would vote anything different when the plan is from twenty eighteen and it's all the all the all the tranches have already been hit, right? So like, yeah, how, how do you think about that? Yeah, I guess the concern would be you piss off the judge and if the judge has any authority to do anything that they will nix you on it. And, and so a Why would that piss law, off the judge? Because you think you're trying to undermine the judge's ruling by doing it. My ruling was to unwind the deal because there, and there was a financial benefit that's presumed. And but, you're- So I'm sorry. She didn't disallow, she didn't say you couldn't do it. But if, if I were the judge who didn't like Elon and but and if the judge says it's rescinded and you have to revote on it, right? And Tesla does everything it can to make that happen as soon as possible, and it just happens to go through again as a yes with all the asks that were in the lawsuit, how in, in what universe is that undermining the judge? You're you're asking me what's the logic and you and I'm telling you what the response would be, the okay. emotional response. This judge does not like Elon. And so anything that attacks her authority will be responded to accordingly. And, and I, by the way, I don't give, I don't give a blank, by the way, it, sh it shouldn't stop Elon or Tesla from doing anything, but that's what I would anticipate. So if I was a conservative law firm evaluating, should I do it? Should we go forward? I would consider that even though I don't believe it would be justified, but I don't know what's going to happen. You know, I may think that this all may get thrown out on appeal, right? But there's no guarantee of that. And so if I'm the lawyer, do I want to, even if I think there's a 5% chance it might come back and bite us on the butt 
Am I going to risk that? I don't know. So logically speaking, I agree 100%. But the judge is obviously it act, is acting emotionally towards Elon, even like, again, I go back to the first line of that stupid 200-page opinion that we all had to read. Did the richest says, person in the world yeah, get paid the richest man. Again, an irrelevant factor, but focusing on that obviously is what catches her attention. So I agree. I agree. Logically speaking, it, she left the door open. She didn't prohibit didn't prohibit Tesla from revoting. In in fact, it's there. It's part of the ruling. I, I guess what's shocking to me, maybe it shouldn't be, but it's shocking to me that a judge would be emotionally driven on a decision. Is that a common thing? Not common, but not not so rare, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, if I if if you I unfortunately I've been in cases where I've had the wrong Colorado Supreme Court getting overrun by SCOTUS today. <laughs> well no, but I've been in positions where I knew the judge hated my client. And once you're in you know, the way it goes, your opportunity to get rid of the judge is the start of the case. Like in California, so I got a free shot, no matter what. No reason. I don't have to have a reason. If I get a judge, I get I can toss that judge. But it goes the next judge, I have to have cause. And also now all the judges know I, I tossed that first judge. So it may, may mm. uh, you know, Im impact it. So out of that, out of some of those cases, once you're in it and the, the judge hates your client for whatever reason, uh, maybe justified, by the way, I've seen occasions where, you know, the judge is obviously biased and there's nothing you could do about it. And there's no way of proving it. And your client's a scumbag. And so be it. Not mm. fair. Not fair, but the way it is. So, so judges are human. Yeah, yeah, some of them. Some of them. Okay. You know, but but she's obviously, you know, again, I feel, I feel that's the thing that always that comes through from her is she's biased. So she has a bias against him, and she will do everything in her power to do a circus, you know, circus soleil. That's what she's gonna do. That's the maneuver she will do to make sure her ruling appears to be sound. So she's okay. going to she's going to do gymnastics. OK, that's OK. Shocking but that's just stuff. A, but again, shocking. That, <laughs> but okay. this is OK. But that's just unfortunately, it's the <laughs> yeah, that's real, what it realistic. Is. And again, okay. you know, this is trial court. It's not it's not it's they, we have a right to appeal. Right. It, it's going to go up an appeal. And I don't know what her attorney fee award is. Maybe she will be surprising, you know, perhaps. You know, she did have a, a a prior case last year where she took kind of a conservative position on attorney's fees. So okay. maybe despite the fact that she doesn't like Elon, maybe she thinks the way that she can survive an appeal is by completely gutting the attorney fee request of plaintiff's counsel and giving them, you know, some small award. You know, first thing that she could do, obviously, is as opposed to 55, I mean, obviously, there's two numbers you could focus on. I don't think it's either, but if you want to, it's the 55 billion and 2.5 billion. So if you want to cut the legs out of the attorney's fee award, you go to 2.5 billion and that, that's where you start off. That means you've just reduced the attorney fee award by what, 25 times, you know, yeah. by, dramatically. So sometimes I've been surprised that judges will, their motivation, their prime motivation will be to survive appeal. But- but one thing, even if, and this is where I get like, this is where I get more upset, right? Because now the, it, let's say they go back down to 2.5 billion, which is how much Elon was actually paid from the options thus far, right? Now they would be like, okay, well now, because you did a 2.5 billion, we are entitled to the 33%, right? Because hey, it changes the math. Yeah. And then 33% of 2.5 billion is still almost a billion dollars. Of course, the, right. uh, the yes, but the other other character, the other way you could look at that is it's two point five billion minus the compensation he should have been paid over that period of time, which might leave less than let's say it's two hundred. I think I, the way, my calculation because you're comparing it to Salesforce yeah. and Tim Cook and all gotta these guys. He's got to get paid. He's got to get paid okay. something that's reasonable for even if he's not paid the way he should be paid. I see. That's that leaves two hundred. You know, my the, my just made up example. That's two hundred and fifty million dollars. And then you do 33% on that. They get 33%. It's too much, but that's 70, what's that? $80 million, $83 yeah. million, whatever. Which is still okay. a lot. <laughs> it's a lot, but you know, for me, 
that would be like a you know a day and a half of work for me but you know, for, uh, for you know for, of course you're the best lawyer in the land there you, go. you know but 80 million dollars as much as we detest it it's not going to change anything and you know if you look at tesla stock today there's you know i don't know whether it's down because china you know numbers were were low but you know there was during i guess it's it's there's a caveat because of the holiday. Whatever. Look at the holiday. China yeah. sales are down right. year over year six percent for the first two months. I mean, there is right. a little bit of softness. Or yeah. I don't know if it's not down because they're factoring in like a six percent dilution, and it's reflective of that because it's down like six or seven percent today. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe it's a combination. You know, maybe it's a sentiment. Period. It's probably Whatever. sentiment more than anything. But yeah. I mean, I don't even. I I try yeah. to even tr stop trying to figure out what the hell's going on short term. I do, but okay. So, but even then, what's interesting there is that again, if the shareholders because it's rescinded, if the shareholders were to revote yes again, the pay doesn't change for Elon, right? And really, the the lawyers in that scenario would be getting paid eighty million dollars just because of a little tiny infraction from the judge's perspective that they weren't transparent enough be, uh, 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 of the uh, relationship between Elon on the board, even though the shareholders voted yes. Yeah, and what we would be entertaining for me, I think this would be an entertaining way. If they're going to yeah. do that, give him more than yeah, what right? the prior package is <laughs> yeah. so that the net benefit is zero. <laughs> yeah. And then... Yeah. If there's no financial benefit, then what I said, you know, that Lawyers lodestar have to pay. method, <laughs> that lodestar method, yeah. they go back. Okay, so they make thirteen million dollars. They get a million dollar reimbursement for expenses. That million's a lot, by the way, but that's expert fees and stuff like that. Sure. So, so that, by the way, you know, I when I was talking, I didn't know the hours, so I just played around. So yesterday, when I, because I didn't see that they hadn't seen the brief, so I estimated. I kind of guesstimated. I mm -hmm. guesstimated twenty thousand hours. And I gave him a thousand bucks an hour, so I gave him twenty million. So it was even le it's even less than that. If and if that was the award, if it ended up being like fifteen million bucks, that's kind of you put the two together. Yeah. I you know again I don't like it, but you no know, fifteen million bucks that's not going to really impact anything. You know in the grand right. scheme of things. And now this is with an assumption that Tesla loses the appeal, right? Correct. Because if they so now I think maybe now we talk next steps and then after this we'll do Q and A from the crowd. Yeah, and, and okay. So yeah. before you even go, yeah. So the so the issue there is this award, whatever it is, whether it's six billion or twenty million, and they go forward with an appeal because I think that's going to happen no matter what. What's the deadline for that, by the way? It's going to be thirty days after all this is final, final, and we're not not final, final yet. Okay, we, what we, is we, final we, final? After the attorney's fee motion, after there's a final judgment, it's got to be a final judgment. There's none. Okay. So there's still months before the appeal. Yeah, yeah. But the, okay. but the issue on appeal, or at least the thought process is going to be, is there's going to have to be a bond placed because you're not going to want to have collection of that attorney fee award. And that bond's going to be 1% to 2% of the whatever that number is, and plus collateral. So who's going to put up the collateral? Who's going to pay for it? And the amount of that judgment is going to be significantly, you know, if it's $20 million, we're talking about, you know, peanuts in terms of a fee and collateral. If we're talking about $6 billion, you know, that's not insignificant. Somebody's going to have to collateralize it with stock or something like that. Not insignificant. Okay. All right. So then, so then, so thank you for that. So then the next steps will likely be, so there's gonna be a final, final process. So there has to be, there has to be a hearing for this, the lawyers asking for the 6 billion, right? And then the judge is gonna rule on that, right? And then once she rules on that, then there's going to be a final, final process that, that solidifies the case that says, this is the outcome and here's the what everybody's getting paid. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then after that, Tesla has what, 30 to 60 days after that days, decision? 30 days. And uh, at least that's what I read in Delaware. Okay. 30 days after the final judgment uh, to file a notice of appeal. Got it. And then so after the final judgment is passed, which we think might be one to two months away, probably, uh, maybe longer. I would say longer. Longer? Okay. Yeah. I'd say 90 days. 90 days. Okay. Yeah. Cause I'm figuring like Tesla is going to have maybe even more. I'm figuring Tesla is going to have 30 days to file a brief. I'm going to figure that uh, the plaintiff's counsel is going to have 60 days to file the brief. 
there'll be a hearing 15 to 30 days thereafter, and then probably a proposed judgment, proposed final judgment thereafter. They may argue still about language. There still could be. But let's say it's over at that point in time. Then a notice of appeal after that. And then and then the next step would be at least I'm talking about what would happen in California. I presume it's going to be similar. Then you would have to have a record prepared. So you would say, this is what we want to be to be considered on appeal. All this stuff, which is all the filings. There may be, you know, deposition testimony, whatever It has to be put together. That might take a few months to put all that stuff together. Can I ask you a quick question? Sure. Can can Tesla submit in the appeal this uh, request from the law firm of six billion? Can they use that as 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 firepower that says is it a hypocritical for the firm that's trying to protect investors by saving them money is seeking such large sums amounts well, of they, money? They're, they're certainly going to argue because attorneys' fees are probably going to be the main issue in the appeal. Okay, like, you know, it's, it's going to be like. The, it's, I think I talked about it. It's going to be the standard, the fairness standard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's yeah, you got it. Issue number one. I got issue it. Issue number two is the remedy itself. The attorney's fees is that yeah. reasonable? Because, by the way, in the prayer, again, that's the document at the very end of the complaint that lists what you want. They ask for reasonable attorney's fees. They right. don't ask. So you can ask for attorney's fees in different ways. You can ask for attorney's fees and they still have to be reasonable or you could ask for a reasonable attorney's fees. So my question would be by using that language, have they kind of circumvented the law of Delaware and made reasonableness the issue, not the standard in Delaware? Cause I would have just asked for attorney's fees myself mm-hmm. and judges don't give you like, if, if you go in a case, let's say you have a contract commonly what happens in a contract there's an attorney's fee provision it says if there's a lawsuit, whoever wins, it gets their attorney's fees. If you go in front of a judge and you say, I incurred 206,000 in attorney's fees, the judge usually goes through the bill and they, they reduce by X number, just makes it more palatable for everybody. Yeah. So it's going to happen. It'll happen okay. that way too. Got it. Okay. Okay. So then, so then realistically speaking, we're not going to get a, an appeal filed until sometime towards the end of the summer, most likely. Right? Yeah, I would say it's fair. Ish. July, July, August, September, yeah. somewhere in there. Be- before football starts. Yeah. But yeah. there should be a stay. You know, there should if, assuming that they're that 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 they're comfortable with everything, they they won't be able to execute on whatever judgment it is. Define a stay for us. Okay, so if they go and post a bond, um, well, there's ways you can get it. So they can go and ask the judge for a stay. The ju- judge will say no. They could go to the appellate court and ask the appellate court for a stay. The appellate court will probably say no. Or they can go and get, uh, basically get an appeal bond based upon what the amount in dispute is. And we don't know yet because that's going to be based on the attorney's fees. And once that appeal bond is paid for and collateralized, then nobody can take any further action on that pending judgment. So it, okay. it just it, it, the appeal goes forward, but nobody can go out and collect on the attorney fee award or anything like that. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, all right. So then really, realistically speaking, the next steps from this point are for the people that, let's say, are not, you know, if you're a Tesla investor and you're not happy with what's going on, there we have a couple of links in the comments section below. I mean, obviously, you're more than free to do whatever you like, but... Uh, it does seem like if you're somebody who's unhappy with the ruling, you can send a letter to the judge to let her know that uh, there are, like, you know, to try and uh, well, amicus brief, right? It's called the amicus no, this, brief. No, this was just a letter. This, this, this was is just a letter. Oh, this is different. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. right. Okay, that, this is just, different. Just to, just to kind of just clarify again, the Go amicus ahead. brief is actually a filing in the court. It's proper. It's like an official filing. Yeah. 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 And just like the the brief that we're, we looked at today. Yeah. And a, the letter is just a submission, and generally they have to reference the submissions on the record. They don't yeah. have to consider them, but they have to reference them. And it's, you know, again, if you submit box, I've seen this on movies, right? Haven't you seen movies like a, yeah. a Christmas movie and uh, Chris Kringle gets like a bunch of boxes of letters yeah, yeah, at yeah. the courthouse? Yeah, it's, it's impactful. It's like that. 
Yeah. Okay. It's, you're just basically saying, hey, like, like we're just people that that have event investor interest in this. Like, this is this. We think this was unfair. Yeah. Or whatever. And we agreed. Yeah. You know, we we vote. We would have voted. We voted for it. We would have voted for it. And yeah. again, but it's important to be respectful to the judge, just in case she reads it, because we don't want to give her a reason to, you know, dislike right. the crew anymore. Yeah. Which, which again, for me. As somebody who had maybe more respect for the judicial system in the United States, that's it's mind blowing to me that emotions can play into a ruling. Again, I'll remind you, first day of law school, my real property professor talking to the class says the top half of the class, you guys will do well. The bottom half of the class, you guys will become judges. <laughs> <laughs> and I've oh, remembered boy. that my entire you know that's 40 years later <laughs> hey hey listen you got a perfect example right you got an uh, example here uh it's it's a set listen it's a sad it's really sad i would be depressed if it wasn't so funny <laughs> if that, to be honest well the, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the good part is you know that eventually tesla's going to be out of delaware you know so yeah they, so they let's want, let's Talk about that a little bit, right? Because I think that so. All right. So from your perspective as an expert, uh, not necessarily maybe in this specific field, but somebody who's practiced law for a really long time and understand the dynamic of like of, of this kind of stuff, maybe in different fields, but it's sort of transferable. What do you think is the likeliest outcome from this for where we are today? Like if you were to put like, you know, your Oracle hat, which we're not going to hold you accountable to, but just based on your gut feel and what you know about what happens here, where do you think this ends up? And how do you think Tesla's decision to leave Delaware is influencing this decision? Um, I don't know if it's in. So leaving Delaware, first of all, I'm going to do it backwards. Leaving Delaware, it appears that you can without being restricted by the court. But there have been cases where a minority shareholder, there's, I forgot, it's TripAdvisor. TripAdvisor, a minority shareholder objected to TripAdvisor moving from Delaware to Las Vegas, where the controlling shareholder was based, the judge, not McCormick, but the judge said, you know, I don't really like it, but I'm not going to stop it from happening. But we do have, I would, I do have authority to do that. They threw it out. So can they stop it? The judge thinks they could, but it would guess it would have to be, you know, have to be exceptionally ridiculous circumstances, maybe where the CEO was actually looting the company, something like that. In what universe would a judge be able to stop a business from moving itself out of that state? Oh, if that seems insane. In yeah. yeah, I mean, the, the, the procedural way would the person who lost, they lost, by the way, the person who was trying to stop it went in for an injunction to stop the, stop the move. Um, so that's what they, they tried okay. to do. They were unsuccessful, but the judge kind of left the door open. But again, it's not like this, where there's a question about the pay package. That wouldn't be it. It would be, in my mind, it would be like where a CEO is looting the company yeah, and he's moving to Nevada because he thinks he can't, they won't be able to catch him there. There that's has to be cause for something yeah. illegal happening, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, okay. I don't see them stopping. In terms of the outcome, I think the trial court's going to find, in my mind, the easiest way for her to kind of to believe that she could be upheld on appeal is not to focus on the $55 million number. It's to fo focus on the $2.5 billion number. She'll disregard what he will get paid because... She'll say, we don't know because there's no pay package. I don't know. Uh, you know, who knows? Speculative. And she'll give them 30%, 33% of that 2.4 whatever, which would be, you know, uh, a big number, a big number. Yeah. And Seven, then that'll, that'll go up on, I think that'll go up on appeal. And I think yeah, there's a very good likelihood it gets reduced on appeal. I can't tell you what the number would be, but I believe that it would be reduced. We'll, we'll know better when they issue a ruling on the case now that's before the Delaware Supreme Court. I'm sure the Tesla guys would like that ruling before they have to file a brief in this case, because then they could tailor, you know, tailor their language around whatever the Supreme Court said. I don't know if the Supreme Court, on the other hand, is going to wait to issue a ruling 
until after this is already kind of in the oven and not and because they don't want to impact that that case yeah. but you know any this is this would be the largest attorney fee award by far so it's going to be by a factor of like eight right i mean it, this is a giant well, it's, it's by 10 by currently 10, yeah. by 10 and again the difference is on all those cases at least, again my the way i see it the difference is there was actually money that was generated so plaintiffs generated money for the company here they're taking money away from the company it makes no honestly it makes yeah it's no sense. ridiculous yeah it makes no sense i'd understand by the way it'd be different if it was a class action for the shareholders even that's different because if there was some payout the shareholders would get a payout even if it's bs you know a bs payout at least logically that's way here the only guy who's getting a payout really besides plaintiff with his nine shares is the attorneys that's yeah. it yeah wild even though that same shareholder that has the nine shares made 10x his money over the course of the last six years yeah i said by the way and this is another suggestion i threw out but you know probably not not gonna work is you know one of these shareholders with nine shares who probably whatever happens to Tesla is probably not going to make a difference in his economic uh, existence, but he got 10 grand, right? Or he's going to get 10 grand and he has a claim, right? Cause he's a plaintiff and maybe the plaintiff's law firm, the law firm that he was working, maybe they didn't explain it to him accurately. Exactly. Maybe, or maybe the, another of the, sh of the uh, plaintiffs, maybe things weren't explained exactly what was going to happen and what the impact might be on shareholders or Tesla. Yeah. And maybe they have a claim. And you know, those claims, you could buy those claims. So theoretically, if somebody has, and you know, it's, it's I'll, I'll call it a cause of action. That's what it would be called. So somebody has a cause of action against their lawyer. Let's say their lawyer says, you know, we'll get you 10 grand. Um, you know, we'll get a few bucks out of here. Tesla's going to be fine. So you won't have to be deposed, whatever. And it turns out it's a complete lie, and they basically de decapitate Tesla. And uh, that plaintiff says, "I wouldn't have done this for ten grand if I knew that." I'm, I'm going to get. Can you can imagine? Yeah. The emails the because that's going to happen, right? This plaintiff will be. I'm not suggesting it, but probably some Tesla people are going to be unhappy with the plaintiff because he impacted them. So maybe the plaintiff would have reason to say, you know, they didn't tell me exactly. And I'd sell my claim to Elon Musk. Mm. So Elon Musk now has a claim against the plaintiff's attorneys. Mm. It, it, it's an interesting scenario. How likely is that to happen? Though? That, that has to be up to the plaintiff to decide to do that, though, right? Obviously. That's up to the plaintiff individually, yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I, but I would bet, a, you know, the problem with a, the, that kind of plaintiff is they wouldn't be trustworthy or credible, right? That would be mm. ultimately the issue. But yeah. we know they're a mercenary, right? So if you offer them, if they took 10 to do this, you offer them 20 for their claim, they done. Yeah. Done. That, I just, that was that was my my uh, suggestion. You have to wonder what's going through that person's mind, right? Which would be even more, if you're watching this, uh, the person that put that, just uh, drop me an email. No, just kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> but I do wonder... Um, seeing all this play out and obviously you're a shareholder of the company so in my head the one thing i have to keep remembering is that if you're a shareholder of the company your money's in there for a reason is what i like to think right you believe in the company's ability to grow long term you like the leader you like the product whatever it is right and to have such a public uh um lawsuit come to a conclusion where you've won right in this case you've won but then lo your lawyers are making six billion dollars while you're taking home ten thousand, right? Whatever or whatever the whatever the award is for the plaintiff. So how? I'm sorry, I may I may have missed this part. How is the award for the plaintiff decided? Um, it's it's generally they just give a uh, a a bonus for the lead plaintiff, and okay. it's usually on the order of ten or fifteen thousand dollars. It's kind of customary. Okay. Uh, customary like that. Um, and wow. they, they but you know the guy probably you know. The, I suspect that because this gentleman apparently has done it to other companies, so mm -hmm. he's been lead plaintiff 
against other companies also. At least that's my understanding. So he may get a very small interest in a company, and all he's doing is just getting standing. In other words, standing is that because you now have an interest, that you have a legal right to pursue relief. So his nine shares, I'm sure, you know, his 2000 bucks or whatever he's in it, that could have been a lot of money to him. I suspect not. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it may be the case that he's just a mercenary and he's just getting a hit here, hit there, and he doesn't have to do anything. And he made his nine shares now are very valuable, right? Theoretically. So, so it's kind of like th th there may be people out there that are just leveraging their name and their and their ability to invest in companies for law firms to leverage them to run these suits against companies, basically. Yeah, yeah. Because I always, you know, I think you know, if publicly they're getting a uh, maybe a ten or fifteen thousand dollars, we don't know behind the scenes, right? I would mm. suspect that if plaintiffs' attorneys get you know a, a six billion dollar recovery, that plaintiff might get more more than 10 or $15,000. I see. Just my, just my guess. Just, yeah. Because, you know, the lawyers are trying to get $6 billion, so I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I'm just learning so much from you, Richard. <laughs> I, I can't say that I'm liking what I'm learning, but I, I am learning. Okay. Um, is this going to open up more law firms or more people to go after companies like Tesla because of a ruling like this? Like, do you if think they, that... Yeah, if the attorney fee award if is like is yeah. enormous, I mean, it's like uh, you know you're holding bait out, right? L these kind of class action lawyers, they may do you know a whole bunch of cases. M most of them may be garbage, uh, but yeah. one hits. Listen, this one hits. These guys don't have to work in again, right? For their families, their families, families, you know, generational and everybody who worked at the law firm. Yeah. So, it, yes, it would be encouragement for plaintiff's counsel, which would be, you know, if you think that this is not a good situation, then the award would not be good. Yeah. All right. Uh, should we do any more? Uh, should we do some questions? Is sure. there anything else you wanted to highlight be, uh, before we, we do that? Uh, no, because we're going to go along. We're going to see like, you know, this is going to be a process. We'll see. Yeah. We'll have a, we'll see Tesla's response and we'll be able to kind of put more Absorb context that. in it. Yeah. yeah, but I do think it's interesting from our Friday stream with the open AI thing is how hilarious would it be if that lawsuit lands in the in the same hands of the current judge? Because <laughs> it is filed yeah. in Delaware. Yeah, from a that different would be perspective. Incredible. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that would be. Yeah. Okay. Um, do drop a comment, uh, a question in the comment section below, please. Uh, if you have any questions for Richard uh, as it pertains to this lawsuit or whatever else you have, just type question before your question. So it's easy for us to figure out. Uh, Alex did the math for us, and I, I believe I saw it somewhere else too. So, based on the award that the lawyers are seeking of six billion dollars, essentially that turns out to be two hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars per hour of lawyer fees. Yeah, which pissed me off because that's eight thousand dollars more an hour than I charge. <laughs> Man, you des but you deserve every penny, Richard. That's the big I, difference here. I do. That's the big I difference. Here, I, yeah. I agree with you. By the way. Yes. All right, question, and I think we may have touched on it a little bit uh, per Johan. Can another, another law firm do this again? If this is standard procedure in the U.S., should the Tesla board have known about this possibility and acted differently? That second question is interesting. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, well, they could have perhaps. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Maybe they did discuss it. I presume they must have addressed it. They probably were surprised at the ruling. They, you know, it was a it was a novel ruling. Uh, they probably didn't anticipate that as the ruling. So if they didn't think that was going to be the ruling, then they wouldn't have acted upon it. Uh, it's not in terms of a standard procedure. Understand, it's not standard procedure even in the U.S. So each each jurisdiction. So this is not federal court. This is state court in Delaware. So this is just what the Delaware law is. In California, like I said, in California, that thirteen million dollar award would be appropriate. So yay, California. <laughs> 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 yeah, California. They should move it to California instead of Texas. Um, from uh, Luke on X, do you guys think this is a big show just to hurt share price potentially for peers? Um, I, I don't. I mean, from my perspective, I think it's just a law firm that saw an opportunity. Yeah, that's the way I see yeah, it. Yeah, and if if the law firm is being hoary too, they don't want to. I mean, they'd want the two ninety whatever their shares are, because that's another thing I thought about. I mean, I'll throw this out too. So they want twenty nine million shares. What happens? If test because they didn't say 
undiluted, non-diluted 29 share, 29 million shares. They just want 29 million shares. So what happens if Tesla does a forward 10 for one split and uh, gives them their 29 million shares, but now they're diluted because uh, they're not, they don't get 290 million shares. They only get 29 million shares. That's just my evil thought. Process. That's that's so like like literally do a thousand to one split. Do it, do it, just make it so that yeah, because they talked about the shares, not the money. <laughs> not the money. Oh my god, that yeah. would be incredible. But then they will probably like file an appeal that says, "Well, we mean by the share count back yes. in twenty, you know, or the current share count." Oh, this, this is yeah, yeah. Law is such be, a pain in the butt. But it would be, but it would be fun to do. It would be fun to do. Uh, and what's interesting is a fee award in freely tradable shares is appropriate. So they're basically saying we got the shares, but we can sell them in the open market if we want to, right? Yeah. And that's a, that's that's the wild thing here is that they would get six billion dollars in shares, and then there's nothing stopping them from just dumping it in the market yeah. that same day. They could just dump it in a day. What would that do with the stock price for everybody else that remained? Because they didn't want any restriction. They also kind of like you know in their in their calculation, they and again seem like nuclear physics to me but they did some dil ill dilution discount of like 27 percent so yes it would be tradable but they claim they discounted that by some percentage so it's just this thing it's weirder by the minute uh from scott uh, from x can the state and the law firm be countersued yeah so again if the ruling is upheld by the courts then it's it is what it is you're, you know, let's assume that was bad ruling at the trial level, the appellate court was ruled against you, then your next remedy is the Supreme Court. If the Supreme Court, and generally the Supreme Court won't take kind of this type of case, they're looking for more constitutional questions, but maybe, you know, I don't know. They, they have ruled, by the way, before on like damages, punitive damages, so they could, they could, but if the Supreme Court took it, that would be the final word. The Supreme Court rejected it, that would be the final word. Okay. Uh, another one from Alex. How does the company hedge against risk, the risks and costs of this lawsuit? I assume they would reserve. They would put. It, they'd have cash, and they have. Yeah. And again, I think they have insurance. And there's probably, um, oftentimes, what happens is behind the scenes there's insurance litigation. So there may be policies, and there may be questions about coverage, but they may pay and then sue each other, and there may be rounds of litigation that we don't even know about. So that's probably what's going on. Insurance is the, usually the way you would hedge. Yeah. Let's do a few more here uh, from Standards on X. Question pertaining to the OpenAI suit. Is nonprofit IP ripe for exploitation with for-profit endeavors based on what OpenAI did, right? So op I, I think the, the question here might be OpenAI is a nonprofit that converted to for-profit. Could could I mean I think that's what they're asking is can everybody just do that now if let's say that lawsuit Elon doesn't win that lawsuit now every everybody's going to start as a nonprofit yeah absent basically. absent well you can't def, you can't do it to defraud so that would be the that's kind of the con controlling function but if you you there's no no restriction other than that if there's again in this case uh, Elon's claiming there's a contractual restriction but other than that you can switch you lose a benefit obviously right nonprofit yeah. theoretically is a benefit there's some tax benefits. So you give up that. As a matter of fact, that's an interesting point. I'm glad that kind of took us a different point. In their brief, they say one of the reasons, one of the benefits they claim that Tesla gets out of the settlement is there's a 21% tax benefit that Tesla Tesla gets if they uh, in the return of the shares, which were never given, which were never given, yeah, and haven't been exercised, and the options haven't been exercised, yeah, yeah. Uh, one hole on YouTube. What happens to Elon's other ventures if this case drags on and he can't pay them with Tesla shares? I mean, Interesting that's, question. A, that's a very good question. I would think that if he gets a stay, that he will operate like nothing's going on. I think that's kind of how he maneuvers. If he didn't have a stay, then, you know, that would might impact his ability to go forward. But I expect there will be a stay no matter what. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Samir, lawyers are scumbags, <laughs> except for Richard. He is our pal. I agree. Richard is one of my favorite lawyers, and by one of my favorite, I mean my favorite. Uh, he's only a go. scumbag some of the time. <laughs> he said it, not me. Uh, what changes do you think will be made to the new comp package, assuming these fees go away? 
Yeah, I think it's the disclosure part. That seems like, you know, because we're not going to give him a lower package and the the out. So, you know, the issue is fairness. So the package the court said is unfair. But if the shareholders override that, then we're good. So the shareholders have to override the package. So, again, I think it would be great if it was more yeah. than the prior package. That would be incredible. I hope they do that. Let's Elon, you last... heard me say that, right? You heard yeah, me say that. We're trying to give you more money. Uh, last one from Per Johan here. Uh, what does Richard think about having AI ruling in courts? Um, mean that AI would be the judge? Mm the judge maybe let's let's expand it to you know helping the lawyers or maybe they present the case let's well, how do you view ai in the courtroom uh, well i'll tell you how the courts view it any any brief or anything you file with the courts you have to indicate if you've used the ai so they are ah. disinclined they don't they don't like it interesting um, yeah now it's it's new and you know like anything else they probably have to figure it out and get comfortable with the accuracy because the concern is it may not be accurate because how do you if you get something from uh gbt4 if i do a brief and it's just argument how do i know that's true how do i figure out if it's true i can't i can't mm. go I, I can't i i, I don't have access to the, to the what code they the neural at. network yeah yeah, yeah. You know, if it if it cites cases and things like that, I could look at the cases and I could see if that's accurate. But argument, I can't. So I think judges are a little bit insecure that they may, you know, that somebody might be pulling a wool over their eyes or, you know, they're just and, you know, judges are often a little stodgy and uh, slow. So, yeah. Uh, shout out from Matessa Boomer Mama, Alexander Mertz. Uh, thank you for Richard. Thank you to Richard for all the work of, and for the shout outs today. Uh, make sure you go check out Alexander Mertz on X. We, I, I posted it on the comment section below. I'll make sure to pin it to the top of the comments after this thing. Uh, and again, goes. Alexander, I'll just, uh, just to make it yeah. clean. Alexander is great. And she really oh, is uh, wonderful for the community and, uh, appreciate it. Yeah, she does. She does all so much legwork on her time just to help folks understand what's happening and to be a resource. So even truly, yeah, even when she's working on immigration stuff. Yeah, so even when she's it. doing that. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, but yeah, no, definitely. Thank you, Richard, because it is very helpful to have somebody who understands the story as deeply as you do. Uh, maybe we'll do a, a, one more as shareholders, stakeholders, and maybe we'll end it like this just to kind of resummarize what the actions well, are for people that want to do something about this. Should we be considering building an ad hoc group and obtaining legal counsel? Go ahead and close this yeah, out here. Again, so it was discussed and, you know, that's certainly something that could be done. Um, again, I would, if, if you were going to do that and you had counsel, I would check with Tesla's counsel first to make sure you do nothing that's contradictory. What the group with um, Alexandra decided yesterday they didn't say you couldn't do this, but the idea was what we ended up was doing the letter writing. So that was the alternative. It's obviously cheaper. I don't know what it would cost to file a brief. Maybe it's something to consider for future, you know, for future to have a group ready. Maybe there'll be future legal issues that you want to intervene on. Um, but again, the key thing is I just want to make sure to, that we're consistent with whatever Tesla wants us to do that we don't impede their progress. Awesome. And then lastly, could you possibly say hi, Rob? Uh, hi, Rob. Go ahead. You guys say it too, <laughs> hey, Rob. Hey, hey Rob. Rob. How's it going, Rob? Awesome. All right. We'll leave it there. Thank you so much, uh, Richard, for jumping on. Really appreciate your time. Make sure you go check him out at Not Legal Advice on YouTube at Raw Raw 999 on X. Just a fantastic resource to understand what the heck's going on with this. Uh, really, anything related to this uh, lawsuit thing related to Tesla. You're uh, you're really popping off. I feel like the more lawsuits that come Tesla's way, the, the more we're going to be using you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, picked a, I big, picked a big company for lawsuits, right? <laughs> you sure did. You sure did. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us. I uh, really appreciate everybody. If you enjoyed it, like, subscribe. If you're on recording, make sure you have the live comment up. But I should have said this earlier because we're at the end now. But anyway. Thank you all very much. Uh, we'll have you back on soon, Richard, because I'm sure this is going to go on for a really yeah, take long care. time. Take care, everybody. Be well. Bye, everybody.